Chapter 27 Esper Mason appeared disheveled with a crinkled suit, baggy eyes, and unkempt hair. Esper, you are just the man I want to see. Tell me you have some good news. Esper nodded. Despite his straight face, internally several emotions were vying for his attention. Fear at Palma not responding to texts. Were they safe? Why was Palma silent? Thinking back on their sudden exit from the corner bakery, Esper wondered if they accidentally left clues behind. Likely. And that's what's bothering him. They can't go back if the people tracking them had already descended on the bakery. There was also anger at Saga's tardiness. Did she make a mistake in hiding her tracks? Elation at a million credits. However, the emotion that ringed the loudest was Milo. Was the boy safe? Esper was there to also bargain him out of the compound, and he had a plan to do so. He knew that the raising of the tax rates would destroy and unravel the mid-levels and the trunks, and seeing Mason disheveled confirmed Esper's suspicion that he was desperate. I have good news indeed. He took out his laptop and explained how the hack worked. It could be executed at any point if one had access to one of the servers in the Council of Seven. Despite Palma's warning that they were being tracked, access to the Mech Institute server had not been revoked. Esper suspected that it was kept open as a honeypot. Whomever was going to log in with Clara Emmer's details was going to get a tracking team on their tail. Esper kept it that way. If Mason started poking around the Mech Institute server and executing the hack on the public car markets, the Emmers would get a new scent and be lured away from Esper, Rulo, and Saga. The cherry on top would be if the Emmers decided to double down on their success in convincing the Parliament of a tax raise and simultaneously latch on to Mason as the hacker. After explaining the hack, Mason took out a money stick and floated it over to Esper. Incredible work. This could be the salvation we need to stem the tide of loss that's coming for us. That stung a bit. Esper was propping up the compound. Mason continued, You've proven yourself. Join us. Come back to your family. Esper wanted brothers and sisters, a family. But he couldn't justify it by joining the compound. No. Mason suddenly slammed his desk. Esper, you are wasting your brilliance out there on your own. Didn't you see? They raised the tax rates. We will lose everything we built. It's then that Mason called for the boy. Esper had hoped that he would stay in control of the conversation, but he knew it would unravel if he saw the boy. To gain bargaining power again, Esper leapt out of his chair with his credits and laptop and paced toward the door. Almost immediately, the door locked in front of him. Esper slowly turned back to see Milo in a dapper white suit standing next to Mason. Was he going to threaten the boy again? With Mason's hand on the boy's shoulders, he whispered in his ears. Milo nodded, looked towards Esper and said, Thank you, brother. Esper learned to stop crying when he was a small boy. It was thus a shock to him to feel the warm water rush to his face and his eyes. He pushed it back with all his might, but a small droplet still welled on his eyelid. A lot of children would be grateful for your work, Esper. Are you sure you don't want to join us? Mason asked again. There were so many kids, Esper felt helpless. For the first time, he considered the option of joining Mason, and from the inside, unraveling his power and giving the kids the freedom they deserved. He pushed the thought away. Not going to happen. He had information that Mason wanted, and he was going to gamble it for Milo. I have another proposition. I have information you need. If you give me Milo, you get the information. What kind of information? Proof of the Emmer's corruption. Deal. That was a bit too easy. Something didn't seem right. Did Esper overplay his hand? He revealed what they had discovered. We found what we believe is a bandwidth limiter on the servers of the Mech Institute. Considering their close ties to the Emmer's, we can only assume one thing. It's theirs. We don't have proof, but we believe they are sending denial of service attacks to the city's infrastructure in order to manipulate the public car markets. Mason slowly started laughing and then flipped into sudden rage, slamming his fist several times into the desk. I knew it! The Emmers, pretending to be the city's saviors! Was that enough? Did Esper succeed in his gamble to bargain the boy? Mason paced around the desk before he gathered himself again. Esper, you know all of this and you still choose not to join us? I will uphold my part of the deal, but we need to ask the boy if he wants to leave, don't you think? Esper's stomach sank. Mason asked the boy, Milo, do 
Do you want to leave the compound and join Brother Esper? The boy shook his head. No. A rage from somewhere deep in Esper's memory filled his entire body. From underneath the cap, he started boiling. He couldn't just grab the boy and run. Not only would the guards rip him to shreds, but it was against the boy's wishes. Mason was manipulating them. It must be. This wasn't their choice. Who wanted to stay in the compound? Sorry, Esper. If you want a brother, you'll have to join me and come back with proof of the Emmer's limiter. Esper was furious. You need me. I don't need you. Without Esper, Mason would most certainly lose parts of his empire. But Mason would still have some family. He would always have none. I need you, yes. I'm looking forward to welcoming you soon. Esper had overplayed his hand. Dragged out of the compound, he was a wealthy man without a family. He stumbled through the trunks, dazed and confused. Rulo and Saga were waiting for their share, but Esper did not want them to see them now. He had to take control of himself. With his hands in his pockets and putting one foot in front of the other, he walked it off. His breath slowed down as he rounded corner after corner. It was okay, he told himself. He lost control. With a million credits in his pocket, he didn't need a family. After a few kilometers of following the labyrinth underneath the city, he became his old self again. Standing in a random corner of the trunks, he took a deep breath and filled his lungs with the homely smell of the trunks. He thought his meander worked until his anger suddenly raged back. Grabbing a nearby trash can, he flung it through the windows of an abandoned store. Sleep helped a bit. The following day, Esper, Rulo, and Saga stood at the entrance of the Grand Mansions. It was one of the first sections in the trunks that was originally consumed by the mid-levels. In the early days, the construction on top of the cars in this area was haphazard, following rules more akin to a fungus than any planned design. As the buildings on the side of the road joined into the mid-levels, the corridors would twist and turn, power cables arcing around corners and windows looking out into concrete. The corners could hide markets that could appear and disappear at a moment's notice, away from the purview of the city's police. The market extended through the mid-levels, into the skyscrapers next to it, down into the trunks, basements, and caves underneath. It was a multi-level market orgy of wares, food, lodgings, and services that only thrived when it was dark enough. In some areas, only tires remained of the cars that got swallowed into the concrete, still formally always on sale, but always valuable for their structural revenue. While the eventual formalization of the mid-levels created neater construction in the rest of the city, the Grand Mansions, however, was still its old organic self. If you came back a week later, it would have shifted like dunes into new corners and new markets. All right, Esper said, shopping time. Please be aware of surroundings, and I'm not saying this because of the mansions themselves. We are still not sure if they are still tracking us, so stay vigilant. Both Rulo and Saga nodded. Where should we go first? Saga, you said you wanted to get to a furniture store. Rulo? Dogs. I want to go look at the dogs. Esper and Saga smiled. A man wanting to get a new dog was a cute distraction. What? I just want to look, okay? Just in case I want to get another dog. Rulo, we're not joking with you. It's sweet, Saga said. She turned to Esper. And you? Esper shook his head. Nah, I'm good for now. It was a habitual response. He really didn't care for owning things. All this money and you still want to live in a car in the gridlock? Nothing? You're right. I want to find a few collector's edition books. Also, I could go for some famous mansions tacos later. He had not been back since the hack, but that was pretty much all that was in his car. Books. All right, Saga answered. She turned to Rulo and found him staring at unique lamps. Oi, Rulo, let's go. Dog time. A mixture of a carnival hall of mirrors and a maze. They were turning through it like a theme park ride into all sorts of corners. They walked across, over, under, and through shops filled with hardware, food, goods, services, love hotels, daycares, interesting people, everything. It was like an adult pillow fort. They eventually arrived at the end of a long hallway, unsure if they were in the streets, caves, trunks, mid-levels, or buildings next door. The sign blinked at them, a dog running in between the LED lights, Choppy's friends. When they arrived, it got brighter. They must be in a building with a view somewhere. Esper and Saga walked in while Rulo stood frozen outside the dog store. You okay? 
Saga asked. Rulo took a deep breath, nodded, and walked in. A litter of puppies was scattered through the store, sleeping, running, and playing. A labradoodle named Annie, a boxer named Maximus, a golden retriever named Aloe. Rulo's smile seemed like it could break his face, hard not to feel the infectious joy. This one looks like your vibe, Saga said, pointing to a mixed terrier puppy that looked like a cloud. It was a healthy looking dog wagging its tail at the attention, named Mischief. Saga picked her up, the pup licking her on the face, glasses contorting along with it. Rulo cooed at it. It was beautiful seeing the siblings bond over a dog, but Esper couldn't help feel a pang of pain. He couldn't stop seeing a relationship he never had. Fearing his rage, he turned away and strolled towards the window. Half-finished construction in front of the window seemed to be in the process of being taken down. He asked the store attendant about it. Are they taking down the construction? Yes, afraid so. That's the mid-levels you're looking into. The new taxes unfortunately don't make it that viable anymore for people to invest in building over their cars. We're lucky this view and sunlight would have been gone within the year. Esper nodded and rapidly turned away from the reminder. Why don't you get a dog now? Saga asked. I'll wait till I get a new home, Rulo answered. Okay, that's enough for now. That made me happy. What's next, furniture? They nodded and descended back through the alleys, hallways, and corners of life towards the furniture store. It was gigantic. It felt like its own neighborhood. Stacks of desks, beds, tables, counters, cupboards, and chairs. I bet you could live here and no one would notice, Rulo remarked. Esper chuckled. The thought of building a whole actual neighborhood in a furniture store pleased Esper. He wondered how the society would work. Food, policing, urban policy, etc. Saga danced through the furniture. Esper and Rulo tried to keep up. What do you think? She asked Rulo, stopping at an ornate chair. Rulo shrugged. I don't know. We'll have to see the place first. But like, generally. I don't know. Where would the chair be? Saga peered at it. I was thinking it would be great to put on the balcony, watching the penthouse's lakes and the skyscrapers, she said, turning back to her brother. Rulo's shoulders dropped a bit. Are you sure you belong, you know, up there? <sighs> We've been through this before. Rulo shifted uneasily. He looked at Esper, and it seemed like he wanted backup. No, but really, what do you think life will be like up there? Do you think you will just fit in? What's the real reason? Saga rolled her eyes. Same old story. You're just angry that I'm leaving. No, answer the question, sis. It doesn't matter. This is what I want. I don't have to explain myself. I am your brother. Just tell me. I don't know, okay? I just want some change, something else. I can't keep doing whatever I'm doing. I need out. There are no answers waiting for you up there. And you're suddenly the expert? The guy who wears old shoulder pads for months on end, afraid to let go? You should support me, saying, go sis, go chase your dreams, get out of the trunks. I'm just saying, it's not going to suddenly make you happier. And you should just let go and move on from the accident. I am leaving the trunks. Get over it, Saga said as she fumed. The siblings were tearing themselves apart. Esper's job made it happen. Hey, guys, stop. Please stop arguing, Esper said, interrupting them. Let's calm down with the mansion's taco. I'm paying, okay? Saga's eyes glanced between Esper and Rulo. She shook her head and strutted away. Rulo ran after her. Sis, wait. Saga stopped. Look. I'm sorry, okay? I guess I was just hungry. Esper is right. We need some tacos. Saga kept staring at her brother. Rulo continued. All right. Yes, I was just being an asshole, okay? I'm sorry. For what it's worth, I think the chair is amazing. Saga's face changed towards acceptance, and she nodded at her brother. She waited until he got closer before they walked together towards the exit. Esper waited a few moments behind them. He sighed as he shifted his cap back into a more comfortable position. He imagined what life would be like if he just disappeared into the giant furniture store. It might have been what he needed. As much as they tried to enjoy the spoils of their success, they weren't entirely free yet. Esper's fear about Palma's silence was not unfounded. The Emmer family had tracked them to their temporary hideout in the storm drain, and they were waiting for confirmation to capture them.